Hi, welcome to part 13 in our exploration of Asian art. In this segment, we're going to be traveling back to Korea. We're going to be looking at some portrait painting. Portrait paintings commemorate the sitter in both life and death. Um, in the Hoson Dynasty from 1392 to 1910 in Korea. This painting depicts Sin um, Sukju, who reigned from 1417 to 75, and it depicts him as a uh, meritorious, and basically it means merit, one deserving of praise um, and, and being worthy. Um, so it depicts him as a very um, meritorious subject, or an official honored for his distinguished service as uh, a court um, at court and loyalty to the king during a tumultuous time. Skilled in capturing the likeness of the sitter while still adhering to pictorial um, conventions, artists in the Royal Bureau of Painting, a government agency staffed with artists, created portraits of officials awarded this honorary title. Um, these paintings would be cherished by their families and worshipped for generations to follow. The Chosen, oh, the Hosan, it's spelled C-H-O-S-O-N, so I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say Hosan, or Yi Dynasty, was founded in 1392 by the military leader um, Yi Song Yi, Yi and lasted until 1910. It was the last imperial dynasty and the longest in Korea's history. Um, this painting shows um, Sin Sukji dressed in his official robes with a black silk hat on his head. In accordance with Korean portraiture conventions, court artists pictured subjects like Sin um, Sukji seated in full length view, often with their heads turned slightly, and only one ear showing. Um, crisp angular lines and subtle gradations of color characterize the folds of his gown. Here the subject is seated in a folding chair with his um, um, cabrioli style arms, I guess they're kind of folded together, where the upper part is convex and the bottom part is con concave. And that term is spelled C-A-B-R-I-O-L-E, cabrioli style arms. We also see leather shoes adorn his feet, which rest intricately, which rest on an intricately carved wooden footstool. In proper decorum, his hands are folded and neatly concealed within his sleeves. He wears a rank badge on his chest. Rank badges are insignia, typical, typically made of embroidered silk. They indicate the status of the official, which could be anyone from the emperor down to a local official. As in the Ming Dynasty China, which reigned from 1368 to 1644, images of birds or rank badges precisely identified the rank of the wearer. Here, um, Sin um, Suk Ji's rank badge shows a pair of peacocks um, amongst flowering plants and clouds. It is an auspicious scene suiting a civic official and especially luminous with the use of gold embroidery. Crafted and set, rank badges were worn on both the front and back of the official overcoat that you see him wearing. All right, so let's look at some details. Um, although portraiture conventions such as um, the attire and posture of the sitter were quite formulaic, meaning that there was a formula or they were sort of done in the same sort of style, um, the facial features were painted with the goal of transmitting a sense of unique physical likeness. Um, this careful attention to the sitter's face, such as wrinkles and bone structures, served the Korean belief that the face could reveal important clues about the subject. Look carefully and you might notice the wrinkles around the edges of Sin Suk Ju's eyes, which are often known as crow's feet. <laughs> His thin, almost almond-shaped eyes are bright and clear, and his mouth is surrounded by deep grooves where his mustache meets his chin. His solemn visage ex ex exudes wisdom and dignity. Um, the meticulous, meticulous brushwork on Sin, Sin Sukju's face 
is even more striking in comparison with the solid undulating lines and bold blocks of color that define his attire. Highly skilled artists at the court would have collaborated on portraits such that one artist may have painted the robes accordingly to the prescribed rank or title, while another may have painted the face in great detail. Later portraits developed this, um, developed this interest in the face even further with the use of Western painting techniques introduced to Korea um, by Jesuit missionaries in China in the 18th century. Um, Sin Sukju was an eminent scholar and a powerful political politician who rose in the rank of who rose to the rank of prime minister, named as um, Mator, Met, meditorious subject four times in his life. He served both King um, Se, Sejong um, and King Sejo. Remarkably, he managed to maintain court favor through the um, t the through the tumult of King um, Sejo's coup in 1453. In the course of capturing the throne, King Sejo arrested and killed his own brother, Prince um, An Peyong, um, who Sin Sejuk had also served until the prince's untimely death. So that's a pretty skilled politician to be able to kind of go through these various leaders um, and maintain um, his position. It was his service to the um, Prince um, Am Peyong that earned um, Sin Suju, Sukju a significant place in the history of art. In 1455, Sin Sukju compiled um, Hawaji, which was um, commentaries of painting, that's what it translates into, which contained a catalog of Prince um, Am Peyong's collection of paintings. Sun Sukju detailed records revealed the prince's interest in Chinese painting and his patronage of the um, oh, Hoseon court painter on Gion, who was um, a professionally active artist um, for 30 years, beginning in approximately 1440. Um, Sun Sukju's commentaries have helped scholars to identify specific works and prompted speculation on the cultural exchange between China and Korea. And so here's a picture of Ong Gion, um, Dream Journey to Peach Blossom Land. And you can see it has very similar style to Fong Quan, um, Travelers Among Streams that we looked at earlier in the unit. Um, in addition to the virtue of loyalty, such as the devotion of a subject to his ruler, Confucianism emphasized um, um, filial piety or honor and respect for one's elders and ancestors. Even more important than recording the sitter's appearance and preserving his rank during life, portrait painting served as a focus for ancestral rituals after his death. It was thought that when a person died, the soul of the deceased remained among the world of the living until it gradually dissipated. Rendered in format of a hanging scroll, this painting lightly, likely hung within the family shrine to guide um, the soul in the practice of ancestral worship. In this way, the portrait of Sin Sukji reflected both the honor that Sin Sukji brought to his lineage as um, um, a meritorious official, as well as a Confucian beliefs about the afterlife. Um, again, Confucianism is named after um, um, Kong Kui, later um, given the Latinized name um, Confucius, who lived from approximately 551 until 479 BCE. Confucianism is a philosophical system that stresses a moral and ethical order. Um, Feng Kui's teachings have had an immense impact on Chinese culture for more than 2,000 um, years. All right, so we are going to um, travel um, back to China um, and also um, to Korea again. <laughs> we're going to be looking at the Forbidden City and we're also going to be looking at another um, portrait. 
Um, so this is the last, the very last two works that we're going to be looking at. So the, first, the Forbidden City is um, a large precinct of red walls and yellow glazed roof tiles located in the heart of China's capital, Beijing. As its name suggests, the precinct is a, a micro city in its own right, measuring 961 meters in length and 753 meters in width. The Forbidden City is composed of more than 90 palaces, 90 palace compounds, including 98 buildings, um, and surrounded by a moat as wide as 50, 52 meters. Here's an aerial view. The Forbidden City was a political and ritual center for China for over 500 years. After its completion in 1420, the Forbidden City was home to 24 emperors, their families and servants during the Ming um, Dynasty from 1368 to 1644 and the Qing Dynasty from um, 1644 to 1911. Um, the last occupant, who was also the last emperor of imperial China, um, Puyi, um, that's spelled P-U-Y-I, um, from 1906 to 67, was expelled in 1925 when the precinct was transformed into the Palace Museum. Although it is no longer an imperial pre precinct, it remains one of the most important cultural heritage sites and the most visited museum in the People's Republic of China, with an average of 8,000 visitors every day. The construction of the Forbidden City was the result of a scandalous um, coup by um, Hu, Hu Di, um, or it might be Zhuo Di, it's spelled Z H U D and then D I. The fourth son of the Ming Dynasty's founder, um, Hu um, Yongzang, that made him um, the Cheng Zhu Emperor, which that was his official title in 1402. In order to solidify his power, um, the Cheng Zhu Emperor moved the capital as well as his own family, his own army, from um, Nanjing in South eastern China to Beijing and begin building a new heart of the empire, the Forbidden City. And we'll see that happen with some other um, um, dynasties or, or monarchs that um, to get away from, um, from um, maybe negative political influences, they move, um, they up and move the capital <laughs> to a new place. We, we see that with King Louis XIV um, with the Palace of Versailles, which we'll look at later. Um, so, um, the establishment of the Qing Dynasty in 1644 did not lessen the Forbidden City's um, pivotal status, as the Man Manchu imperial family continued to live and rule there. While no major changes have been made since its completion, the precinct has undergone various renovations and minor constructions well into the 21st century. Since the Forbidden City is a, cer is a ceremonial ritual and living space, the architects who designed its layout, layout followed the ideal cosmic order and Confucian ideology that had held Chinese social structure together for centuries. So here you're looking at some details of some carved painted dragon lintels from part of the architecture. I'm gonna go back to that aerial view we look at this plan and we might compare it to maybe some of the Buddhist complexes as well. You know, this idea of sort of a cosmic order um, or it's sort of representing um, the sort of cosmic universe um, is, is a theme that we've seen and will continue to see um, in architecture complexes in other um, cultures and historical periods. So let's look at a floor plan. Um, so this layout and design ensured that all activities within this micro city were conducted in the manner appropriate to the participants' social and familial roles. All activities such as imperial court ceremonies or life cycle rituals would take place 
and sophisticated palaces depending on the event's characteristics. Similarly, the court determined the occupants of the Forbidden City strictly occupants of the Forbidden City strict, strictly according to their position in the imperial family. The architectural style also reflects a sense of hierarchy. Each structure was designed in accordance with the um, treaties of architectural methods or state building standards, um, which um, were known as Ying Zhao, um, um, Fa Shi, um, this is an 11th century manual that specified particular designs for buildings of different ranks and Chinese social structure. Um, public and domestic spheres are clearly divided in the Forbidden City. The southern half or the outer court contains um, spectacular palace compounds of superhuman of, um, scale. The outer it belonged to the realm of state affairs and only men had access to its spaces. It included the emperor's formal reception halls, plan, um, places for rich, um, religious rituals and state ceremonies, and also um, the Meridian Gate, which is, was called the Wu Min, located at the south end of the central axis that served as the main entrance. Upon passing the Meridian Gate, which you're looking at now, one immediately enters an immense courtyard paved with white marble stones in the front of the Hall of um, the Supreme Harmony, um, which was um, called Tai Hedian, T-A-I-H-E-D-I-A-N, since the Ming Dynasty. Officials gathered in front of the Meridian Gate before 3 a.m., waiting for the emperor's reception to start at 5 a.m. While the outer court is reserved for men and the inner court is the domestic space dedicated to the imperial family, the inner court includes the palaces in the northern part of the Forbidden City. Here, three of the most important palaces um, align with the city's central axis, the emperor's, the em emperor's residence known as the Palace of Heavenly Purity. Um, and there is a um, Chinese word for that, which I will let you look in your notes, is located in the south, while the emperor's residence, the Palace of Earthly Tranquility, is in the north. The Hall of Celestial... Um, and terrestrial union, um, a small square building for imperial weddings and familiar, familial ceremonies is sandwiched in between the two other structures. And so here you have the floor plan and um, you can see an aerial view. Although the Palace of Heavenly Purity was a grand palace building symbolizing the emperor's supreme status, it was too large for conducting private activities comfortably. Therefore, after the early 18th century, the king emperor, um, Yong um, Hing, moved his residence to the smaller hall um, of mental cultivation to the west of the main axis. The palace of heavenly purity became a space for ceremonial uses, and all subsequent emperors resided in the Hall of um, Mental Cultivation. The residence of the emperor's um, consorts flanked the three major palaces in the inner court. Each side contained six identical walled palace compounds forming the shape of um, Kun, it's spelled K with an apostrophe U-N, um, and there's a symbol as well that you can see in the notes. One of the eight um, trigrams of ancient um, Chinese philosophy, um, it is the symbol of mother and earth, and thus a metaphor for the proper feminine roles the occupants of these palaces should play. And basically, the symbol sort of does look like how this is laid out. It's basically like um, two dashes. It's basically 
three rows of two dashes next to each other. So you have two dashes, like two dashes, two dashes, two dashes, and then, this, yeah, anyway, you can see it in my notes. I tried to find it online, but I was having trouble. Um, such architectural and philosophical symmetry, so, it, you know, it does have a very, um, you know, very, it's very symmetrical. Um, however, fundamentally changed with, with the empress, um, dowager, um, E, um, e, or it's spelled C-I-X-I, -I, who um, reigned from 1835 to 1908, um, renovated the Palace of Eternal Spring um, and the Palace of um, Gathered Elegance in the west part of the inner co court of her um, 40, of, uh, of the inner court for her 40th and 50th birthdays um, in 1874 and then again in 1884, respectively. The renovation transformed the original layout of six palace compounds into four, um, thereby breaking the shape of the symbolic um, trigram and implying um, the loosened control of Chinese patriarchal authority at the time. Um, so here, I've done a view of the notes. So here, right over here, so Kun, and then you, you see the symbol right here. So it's important that you understand. All right. So we'll move on. Um, today, the Forbidden City is still changing as a modern museum and a historical site. The museum strikes a balance by maintaining the structure and restoring the interiors of the palace compound and in certain instances transforming minor palace buildings and hallways into exhibition galleries for the exquisite artwork of the imperial collections. For many, the Forbidden City is a time capsule for China's past um, an educational and an educational institute for the public to learn and appreciate the history and beauty of this ancient culture. All right, so um, I'm going to stop here. We have one more work to look at and we will be finished. So stay tuned um, for that. Um, that will be part 14. And then we'll have our unit test. And then we'll be off for Christmas break. All right. So check in later.